Here we want to evaluate the expression. Okay. Uh, we have to make sure that we don't get a square root or i at the bottom of the fraction when you simplify these. Okay. So in this case, let's write what we have here. At the top of the fraction, I get square root of minus 12. So this would be really square root of minus one times square root of 12. We can replace this with i. And similarly, this would be square root of minus one times square root of six over square root of eight. Now, we're gonna break eight to its prime number. That would be four times Two. As you can see, part of eight is perfectly squared, which is four. So, so far, I have i radical 12 at the top of the fraction times i radical six. Okay, let's break 12 also. That would be three times four. Again, part of 12 is also is perfectly squared. For six, that would be two times three, right? We cannot uh, bring that up. So in this case, we have i times i, that give me i squared. Anybody remember what i squared is equal to? Negative one. Negative one. I'm gonna replace that with negative one. Okay. And here we have square root of three times square root of four. Square root of four is two, two. so it would be two two radical three. Okay, this would be two radical three. And then here we have radical six. Okay, so these two would be radical three times, six would be two times three. So when I put them together, that would be radical nine times radical two. Three times three would be nine. You look for pairs under the radical, right? So that would be at the top of the fraction. Here, give me three radical two. Bottom of the fraction, I get two radical two. So after I simplify all that, at the top of the fraction, looks like I get minus one times also, I have um, a two out here, this two, and this three would be multiplied two times three would be six. Two times three would be equal to six. That would be radical two at the top over two radical two. Okay, now normally we have to eliminate radical at the bottom of the fraction. If I didn't have radical at the top of the fraction, then I have to rationalize this. I have to multiply the top and bottom fraction by radical two to eliminate that. But in this case, since I reduce this, everything turns to one. This turns to one, this turns to one. So I don't have to worry about that. So the whole thing would be minus six, minus six over two, which is equal to negative three. So just by reducing each term, everything simplified. So this, in this case, that would be equal to minus three. Here we want to evaluate. So it looks like that binomial will be multiplied term by term. Uh, I could reduce this first. So this would be radical two plus Radical minus nine is really is radical minus one times radical nine, which is three i. Can we see that? Radical minus nine is the same as radical minus one times radical nine. Radical nine is three, and this is i. So I can replace this with three i here. All right, similarly, radical minus four is the same as 
radical four times radical minus one, which is equal to two i. So I can replace this with two i. Minus, okay, radical minus 32 is the same as radical minus one times radical 32. If you break 32 to its prime numbers, what do we get? Half of 32 is 16, half of that is eight, half of that is four, half of that is two, two, one. So 32 consists of two times two times two times two times two, right? Part of this is perfectly squared. So square root of 32 is a square root of four, square root of four, square root of two. Like this would be two, that would be two, that would be a square root. So it would be four radical two. So radical minus 32 is the same as four radical two i. So that's what I'm gonna put here. I'm gonna put here uh, four, Radical two I. Okay. Now I can multiply this term by term. So this would give me two radical two I. This would give me minus four, radical two times radical two, give me radical four, which is equal to two. Then we have I here. Continue with my multiplication. That give me six I squared. Remember I squared would be equal to negative one. And finally get minus 12 radical two I squared. Okay, everybody see i squared, I'm gonna replace it with, with minus one, so that would be minus six. So this would be plus, because it's minus one, that becomes plus 12 radical two, because of this minus. Now, that would give me two radical two, that would be eight. This one here would be minus 8i. Okay, so let's write everything we have. We have 2 radical 2i minus 8i. Can I combine these two? Not really. Uh, I can factor i if I want to, but uh, that would be 2 radical 2 minus 8i. That's what we have. That's how you combine those. And then the other terms would be minus six plus 12 radical two. Right. So with minus six, plus 12 radical two, because it's minus i. So you could write this as, if you wanted to, as a minus six plus 12 radical two, these are my real numbers, and then I have plus two radical two i minus eight i. If I if I did want to factor the i out, that would be this term here. And this term again you can write this in any order you want. You can write two radical two i minus eight i minus six plus twelve radical two all these would be acceptable. 
Yeah. Here we want to evaluate i to the power of 1,000. Anybody remember what would be the first step? Remember i to the power of 4. What's i to the power of 4 is equal to, anyone? Anybody remember what i to the power of 4 is equal to? Negative 2? 1. i to the power of negative, negative 4 is equal to 1. Why? Because remember another one that we were supposed to remember was i, I to the power of, what is i to the power of 2? Negative 1, right? We, we, we use that quite a bit. So i to the power of 4 is really is i to the power of 2 times i to the power of 2, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't this each of these are equal to negative 1? Negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to what? Positive 1. So please make a note of this. Put this in your summary sheet. i to the power of 4 is equal to plus 1. Now we're going to use that information to find i to the power of any higher number. So if I want to find i to the power of 1,000, if I divide 4 into 1,000, then I would know how many i to the power of 4 I have within 1,000. So what you need to do is you need to divide 4 into 1,000. That's what you have to do. If I divide 4 into 1,000, what do I get? 250. What would be the remainder? Zero. So what that means is i to the power of 1,000 really is equal to i to the power of 4 to the power of 250. Right? What is i to the power of 4? It's just 1, right? So it really is 1 to the power of 250. 1 to the power of any number is equal to 1, right? So this is what happens when you get the remainder of zero. So you can remember that if I divide four into this exponents, if I get a remainder of zero, the answer would be something to the power of zero, which is equal to one. Right? So this would be four times 250 is equal to 1,000, i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So if the remainder turns out to be equal to 0, this whole thing would be equal to 1. That's one thing you want to write in summary to remember. Now, if I have to express, evaluate i to the power of 103, we do the exact same thing. We're going to divide 4 into 103. So, Again, why we're dividing into 4? Because i to the power 4 would be equal to 1. Remember, i to the power 4 is equal to 1. We want to know how many i to the power 4 I have within i to the power 103. So if I divide that 4 into 103, get 25, you get 100. So what's the remainder now? 3. So I can write i to the power of 103 is equal to i to the power of 4 to the power of 25 times i to the power of the remainder, right? See, 4 times 25 plus 3 is 103. 4 times 25 plus 3 is equal to 103. So this portion would be equal to 1, right? Because i to the power of 4 is equal to 1, 1 to the power of any, anything would be 1. The whole thing must be equal to i cubed then. Remember, at the end, if the remainder is 3, the whole thing would be i to the power of 3. Remember when the remainder was 0, was i to the power of 0, which is 1? If the remainder is 3, the whole thing would be equal to i to the power of 3. What is i to the power of 3 is equal to? i squared times i. I know i squared is equal to negative 1. So the whole thing would be equal to negative i. So the final answer should be either plus or minus i or plus or minus 1. Okay, next one, we want to evaluate i to the power of minus 81. First thing I want to do is I want to uh, make that negative positive. Remember, a to the power of minus n is equal to 
1 over a to the power of n. So we can do that first. So this would be equal to 1 over i to the power of plus 81. To find what i to the power of 81 is, I need to divide 4 into 81. Why 4 again? Because i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. Okay. So if I divide that, I would get 20. They give me 80. The remainder would be equal to 1. So I can write i to the power of 81 as i to the power of 4 to the power of 20 times i to the power of 1. So as we said before, if the remainder is 1, the whole thing would be equal to i to the power of 1. So this would be 1 again. So this whole thing would be equal to i. So this whole thing would be 1 over i. We need to rationalize this now. We cannot have i at the bottom of the fraction. To rationalize this, I have to multiply this by i over i. i over i would be i squared, so it would be negative 1, and that would be i. So this whole thing would be equal to negative i, as we expected. Either it would be plus or minus i, or plus or minus 1. So i to the power of minus 81 would be equal to minus i.